I'm out in the woods today with my dog Billy and my Pro Mag Root Down. I've been riding this bike for a little bit over a year and I'm going to give you my impressions of it. I am not a bike industry expert. I have an almost embarrassingly low knowledge of bike parts and bike mechanics given how much I ride, nor am I a professional rider, nor have I ever been. I'm an enthusiastic weekend warrior with a working knowledge of bikes and this is my bike. So to quickly go over the components on the bike, I've got a RockShox Pike in the front, 140 to 160 millimeter. I've got a 1 by 11 drivetrain, XT brakes, a D DT Swiss hub in the rear with a Stance Flow EX3, uh, a wheel rim that I basically just went in and said at the bike shop, I'm like, give me the strongest, but most burly thing. I don't care about weight, just because I'd smashed a couple of rear wheels uh, in my time kind of a hazard of the hardtail. Um, Cush core might be an answer to that, but uh, I've yet to explore that. Anyway, then, and the front stance hub with the stance rapid rim and a 150 millimeter rock shock reverb dropper post with a crappy old beat up seat that is comfortable. And Maxxis Minion tires, uh, DHR in the back, a DHF in the front, 2.3 inches with the stickiest rubber available. Um, I love these tires. I previously used the High Roller 2s, front and back, which were also really good, but these are definitely a step up from those. And these are 29er wheels. I do have a, a 27.5 wheel set, but um, really enjoying the 29ers for now. So for starters, why the Chromag route down? I was looking at other bikes at the time that I got this bike, the Kona Hanzo, the steel frame version, and the Norco Torrent specifically. I had only ever had aluminum bikes. I wanted to try something different. A friend of mine who has similar riding style and preferences to me had a Chromag route down and I tried his bike out and had a really good time. And I wanted to go back to the simplicity of a hardtail. I'd had a full suspension bike before that. And I was looking at bikes that were made and designed locally, which is always nice, but also it seemed to make sense to me if a bike is going to be designed literally at the foot of the mountains that I'm going to be riding, it should be a bike that'll do the job. And then it came to the geometry. So all of the three bikes that I mentioned have similar geometry. The route down, this is a 2019 frame. The head angle is 64 degrees and it's got a high bottom bracket for clearance going down ladders and that kind of thing. The bottom bracket height is 320 millimeters and a short chain stay at the back, 415 millimeters. According to the Chromag site, not much has changed on the 2020 frame. Uh, I think they're going with the approach of if it ain't broke. And they also state that it's by far their best selling bike. So they're keeping it pretty much the same. I have an ML frame. They do this in between size between the medium and the large. It's probably too small for me. I'm a little over six feet, one inch. And if I were to do it again, I'd get a large frame. But at the time, uh, the bike that I test rode was an ML. And I had a bit of trepidation about going with a 29er wheels. I was thinking those would be just too much bike for the twisty turns that are on the trails locally. Now that I have a little more confidence on the bike and confidence handling the 29er, then I would probably, uh, like I said, redo it and get the large size. The pros for this bike are basically the reasons that I listed for getting the bike in the first place. The head tube angle gives tons of confidence on the steep, sketchy bits that come up. Uh, it makes it nice and poppy when doing drops or just having to hop your way down the trail. The high bottom bracket, I really enjoy. Uh, it's a big difference from having a full suspension bike, which is kind of, which my previous one was the Santa Cruz Heckler. It was a little lower slung, but also when you put the rear shock into descend mode. Of course, it dropped it down a little bit more. So I was always having to second guess in my head, like, oh, am I going to clear this? What's, what's it gonna, my bottom bracket going to catch? So I really like the simplicity of not only the hardtail, but having the high bottom bracket and just having confidence in being able to get over things. Yeah, the high bottom bracket also gives you lots of confidence in avoiding pedal strikes on the climbs. Short chain stays make it super maneuverable. And the 29er wheels, they roll great. At this point, I would never not ride 29ers. I actually have a set of 27.5 plus, 
wheels for this bike. And last winter, I don't think I even put them on. I just really enjoy the 29 er so much. I will probably bust them out pretty soon here because it is super sloppy on the trails this winter. Well, not quite winter yet, but I am going to appreciate the uh, 2.8 width on the tires and the lower tire pressure that you can run on the plus size wheels. Another huge pro for me on this bike, which is probably similar to many hardtails, is just the simplicity of it. Uh, like I said at the outset of this, beyond changing brake pads, tires, and topping up fluids, I'm not very handy with a bike. So I felt like when I had a hardtail, uh, sorry, full suspension previously, I was always having to fiddle with pivots and um, you know the, the rear suspension setup. Um, but yeah, the simplicity of this bike, you know, not a lot of maintenance and it often gets put away dirty, but um, continues to just be fun to ride every time I can just grab and go. So the only con that I have, other than things that are just implicit to steel hardtails anyway, like uh, a bumpy ride and your legs get more tired. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this, but this is actually my second Chromag root down frame. I had a 2018 frame that broke. I was cleaning it once after a long weekend of riding and I noticed it was cracked almost clear through the top tube, not at the weld where it meets the head tube, but about an inch back from there. Um, I had been riding that frame for about a year and had no big crashes. It hadn't fallen off the back of the truck or anything like that. Uh, so it was alarming to see that. I've been on the newer frame for over a year now, and there's no signs of any weakness at any point in the frame. So I'm willing to write off that 2018 frame as an anomaly. Um, otherwise, I really don't have any cons against this bike. It's just fun all around. So to summarize, this is an awesome bike. If you like the hardtail experience and don't want to feel like being on a hardtail is somehow going to hold you back or slow you down. It's aggressive. It wants to be pointed down, but it's still pretty comfortable going up. Uh, it's really planted at speed and nimble when you need to move it around. I often think while I'm riding, you know, to be smooth and on a hardtail it's often smoothest to be popping over things, you know, to be in the air as you're making your way down the trail. And this bike is great at just wanting to pop up over carry speed. Um, it performs like a much lighter bike when you need it to, and it performs like a bigger, burlier bike when you want it to. So those are my impressions of the Chromag Root Down. It is the one mountain bike in my shed, and I rarely feel the need or desire to have anything else. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, please subscribe to the channel, and I can keep making videos. Okay, cool. Have a good one.